talk to you a little bit about Chelsea and Frank Lampard. Um, Chelsea sitting fifth in the Premier League at the moment. What have you made of Chelsea and Frank Lampard so far this season? Um, well, it's a continuum of last season. I mean, he'll grow. He'll continue to grow. He's learning on the job, and I think he's... Um, I don't really know him personally. I knew his dad. I come across his dad. Um, but he strikes me as someone who's very open-minded, he's willing to absorb things, and he'll make quick decisions in the, in the respect that he's he's capable because he's he comes across as very intelligent, very eloquent. Uh, what I liked about him last year, he had a good start. People were predicting a little bit of doom and gloom. So Champions League place. Um, Footnote to that, qualified early uh, this year uh, for the next stage. FA Cup final. You like to think if Chelsea are going to get the finals, they'll win them. Got done by Arteta because it was like um, the better of the two in terms of like new manager bounce. Um, and then he's picked up the thread this year. Questioned him earlier in the year on our Foot One Sensor podcast with uh, Don Shanks and Alan Hudson said that he's got to get both ends right. At the moment, it's uh, at the back, it's fucking shambolic. Da, 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 da. Went into all these details. He goes out, he gets Silva, who's been a common influence. A um, little bit of arrogance about him. Um, but mainly a common influence through experience. And it's rubbed off on the other players. And without a shadow of a doubt, he came across to me as a bit defiant, a bit truculent in his media interviews, which I liked. He was bristling. Uh, because of like obviously things filter through with regards to the feedback. I've got to say I watched them against West Ham. I, I went over there as a as a guest. My, my birthday's in the October. I went over there because they said, "Do you want to watch a European game, the Crystal Palace game?" And did it. I said, "No, my mates. A lot of my mates are uh, West Ham supporters. I want to go there when they play West Ham." So this was last year when I was sixty, and I was very disappointed that they they only had one pattern of play. I think they're more fluid now. Um, they're more flexible now. And um, I think they've enhanced their pattern of play and their organisation. And like I said, James, they've got it right at both ends. Fundamentally, more or less, they've got it right at both ends. So whereas they were conceding soft goals previously, I mean, they got away with one in the last minute against Spurs. Don't get me wrong. But um, they were conceding soft goals, easy goals. Um, and they've turned that round and they're becoming a little bit harder to break down when they, when they lose the ball. And I think, like I said, the pattern of play going forward seems a little bit more enhanced and there's more variables. Because I, I could only see the one pattern of play against West Ham when they lost at home 1-0. So I think they've come a long way. And I think it's credit to him that he's done such a magnificent job while he's learning on the job. Uh, Chelsea fans are overwhelmed in the summer by the signings. Every other club was taking stock of what's going on globally. Chelsea are writing out the big checks to... The likes of sort of Timo Werner, Zajic joining the club, as well as Thiago Silva, who we mentioned. How do you think them players have settled in so far to the Premier League? Well, that was one of the things that made Frank bristle a little bit in press conferences. And, um, you know, he, like I said, he come across like, I liked it. I thought, fucking good for you. He's the type of guy you'd love, to, you'd love to have played with him and, and been alongside, you know, in another life, um, someone like Terry. So what, what a lovely little triangle that would have made. Uh, you, you, you can read the script with a geezer. You know, defiant, truculent, a winner. And that rubs off on the players. And one of the things he remarks about, whoa, 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 hold on a minute. We're trying to integrate six new signings here. All right? Um, and it takes time for him to bed in. Well, it's common knowledge in football. And it's good. But it's good that he stuck up for himself, for his staff, for the players he signed and for his club. And you know what? When With regards to you talking about money, all the other clubs, that's their problem. That's their fucking problem because I'm not having it, right? There's a bit of thing in me with regards to uh, loyalty, having spent six years at Chelsea, right? What goes on at other clubs is their business and what goes on at Chelsea is their business. Every club has got their own right to spend their money how they see fit, right? And Chelsea's business model and their business plan and all the thing about Chelsea and Chavsky and all this, that's just from jealous Muppets who they would fucking give their right arm to have a chairman like Roman Abramovich. They would beg to have a chairman like Roman Abramovich because all I see around other football clubs is muppetry, right, in the ballroom, where you've got uh, two extremes. You've got either apathy at, at places like Arsenal where they won't spend any money 
right? Or you've got uh, control freaks, uh, clubs that are know for sure they sign off on, uh, they're the last ones to sign off and have the final sound transfers, but I won't name the club or clubs, right? So they, 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 could, only, they could only wish and hope and beg for, for uh, a chairman like Roman Abramovich and these staff like Christina who run things with regards to keeping it cost effective. Because he started off weighing on with loads of money, but now he's self-sufficient. And at the end of the day, all they were doing was spending the money they got for Eden Hazard anyway. You know what I mean? So I don't know what all the, all the big thing is. And, and I think it's been money well spent. You want my personal opinion. It's been money very well spent. Frank Lampard's achievements as a player for Chelsea are incredible. His goal ratio per game, for instance, the legendary status in which the fans hold him in. Is it quite a difficult one to go to a place as a manager when you're held in such high esteem? Because if it doesn't work out, would that tarnish your legacy as a player? I think that that's a relevant point for this for this team. Um, yeah, of course it does. Yeah, yeah. I mean, much lower down. I mean, not have it right. You know, I think anyone. This is not an insult to late nor in. Um, well, in, in actual fact, it was confirmed because they actually got relegated in the non-league. They're a borderline commercially. They're a borderline non-league club. I always said that to Barry Earn. Um, any, anyone in the in the bottom quarter of the championship all the way down to the uh, Division 2, so Division 1 and Division 2, is capable of sliding down uh, the pole into non-league. Um, so the bottom line is, um, I'm speaking to someone who suffered that. I like to think I had a good reputation as a player. Uh, six years, um, learned me lessons from previous clubs. I was a model professional. Uh, I conducted myself appropriately to all the staff and to all the all my all my colleagues. Um, it's right that Clark made me captain, even though I was probably the poorest paid player in the in the in the changing room. And then you fast forward to getting a job in coaching. The youth team were all right because I got rid of all the second year apprentices that wasted their time under the previous incumbent, who ironically now works for the FA and couldn't handle them. And then we turned the results right round and they were my boys. You know what I mean? They were my babies. And then we, t we turned results round and uh, we ended, ended up beating the likes of Arsenal and knocking Chelsea out of the FA Youth Cup. Um, but then it all got ruined when um, people forgot what I did in the previous, the last couple of months of the previous season and uh, weren't interested in the circumstances surrounding the job. So the long-winded answer oh, that I'm giving you is, without a shadow of a doubt, it can affect your legacy as a player. And that... I'm like, I'll probably, you know, in terms of supporters at the club I played at, Lake Orient, I'm probably like Marmite. Um, I don't think Frank, Frank's had that problem. If anything, they've seen what he's done as a player, record, uh, the club's record goal scorer, um, legend, um, in terms of the way he conducted himself on, a, on, a, on and off the field most of the time. Uh, I mean, if I wanted to be spiteful, I could bring things up. Uh... I won't because it's a waste of it. Him and he's, he's number two. Um, Mr. Mean is off the field. He grew up. He overcame all that. Um, and I think, if anything, James, what's happened is, when they've had a blip, the supporters have, by and large, what I've seen on social media, forgiven the blip. And said, well, well, no, hold on a minute. Calm down. You know, let's give him, let's give him a bit of time. This is Frank we're talking about. So it's like the flip side of the coin. You know, if, if, you, if you ingratiate yourself and your face fits, lovely. When you have a blip, it's forgiven. And your legacy as a player is not affected. If your face don't fit, um, get him out the door. And um, your, legacy, your legacy as a player is somewhat affected. Yeah, what can I say? But it's funny how, how all these things like, the you know, six degrees of separation and all that. It's funny how all these things tie in with regards to um, being able to dip into personal experience. You know what I mean? Um, but, you know, I, listen, I'm, ple I'm pleased for him. You know, he can't, he can't move. His mum bought him up well. And uh, at the end of the day, I think he's, he's been a credit to the club. I think he's been a credit to his family. Do you think Chelsea will sign in the January transfer window? Do you think the squad can still be strengthened or do you see players going out more out on loan? Yeah, it can be strengthened. In actual fact, I'll go as far as to say, like, I've done a thing with um, 
uh, CBF Callum up up north in Scotland. He said about giving him things, players to watch, etc. Um, I wouldn't have let I wouldn't have let Lamptey go to Brighton for four million. I'd have kept him to keep the pressure on uh, Rhys James. I think Rhys James showed quite clearly at the weekend that he's more than capable of uh, of an error. He's good going forward, and I had this disagreement um, again with, in the Foot One Sense of podcast, podcast last week. Uh, Don Shanks was refereeing me and Alan Hudson picking our best ever Chelsea eleven. Well, I want my uh, I want my defenders to be able to defend. Um, and he said my team's got class, and Reese James going forward is different class with uh, you know with his supply etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Yep, okay, that's fine. That's your opinion. My opinion is, I think since the day he walked through the door, um, in terms of textbook, in terms of if you're showing a video to a kid, in terms of a session you put on in terms of everything, like I say, being absolutely textbook, for me, the best right back in Chelsea's history, in his prime, in his pomp, I ain't talking about the last couple of years as he slowed down, mine would be uh, as per Um So I just think like certain areas have to be addressed. He's bought Chilwell, uh, he's bought a centre-back, he's addressed the goalkeeping problem. Uh, they've got to try and what they've got to try and do. Uh, it's like I said to you, James, earlier, with regards to Man United, there's a time where People are just they're getting the players are just creeping up and they're just coming to the top of the mountain. Well, that's the time to sell. So the higher, I would I would have cashed in on him, knowing that I've got the kid coming back from Sheffield United, right? Chelsea the same thing. This um, this one they paid seventy million for. It, you know, sometimes you've got to take it on the chin and wipe your mouth. I got slaughtered for uh, <laughs> an ex England youth squad international. I paid five grand for him. And supporters held my feet to the fire over five grand. Imagine what it's like if you've spunk 70 million on a keeper who, who, who ain't cut the mustard. Do you know what I mean? But they've, what they've got to do is take it on the chin and find a way of recouping as much money as they possibly can. Get rid of him. Um, sent midfield, I think they've, they've, they're blessed. Billy Gilmore, he reminds me of uh, someone I played with, Jimmy Clare. And at the time, I might have benefited from it, I don't know. At the time, they said he's too small. Timmy Clare, too small, yeah. But he runs like Billy, Billy Gilmore runs like him, plays like him, and he's exactly the same on the ball as him. Uh, the only difference is Jimmy Clare was uh, was uh, better in terms of mugging people off and dribbling. You know what I mean? He would nutmeg people for fun. Um, Billy's range of passing is a bit better. So they're well blessed there, middle of the park, up front. I think they probably need one more centre forward. Because Werner's blown hot and cold. What he's shown, though, he's shown that German... Team ethic, that um, willingness to do the nitty gritty centre forward bit of running the channels to get the ball down the side of him or get the ball coming under him, whereby he just whips it in and fades it in for someone like um, who was it the other day? Pulisic, I think. Come, he comes sliding in, got across the defender, slid in about five yards, six yards out. Um, yeah, but if you're being greedy, maybe uh, maybe one more centre forward because he, he's not getting any younger, Giroud. Um, but the, we're, we're looking, well, it's looking in good shape. I say we. I've been back there twice in 40 years. <laughs> Prediction for Chelsea: Where do you see them ending up this season? Third. Good. Yeah, maybe maybe second, maybe second. I don't think they'll have quite enough. To, I don't think they'll have quite enough to win it. Can I change my mind? I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to change my mind. I think it's out of Chelsea and Liverpool for the Premier League. Obviously, you've got to throw Manchester City. City could turn on one result, like in the in the mini league, or it could turn on one result um, through a distinct lack of consistency in. You know, like you've got like the, the, the second league within the division and the third league scrapping for survival in the, in the third uh, mini league in the division. Do you know what I mean? So it depends. It all depends on consistency. Um, not preempting you, but like uh, Spurs have showed at the weekend, uh, they've confirmed what I've said. So I've been right all along about Spurs, and I ain't had no credit for it. I can't get a punditry job. I can't get a job on radio. I can't get a job on the telly. Um, I do I do podcasts. I'm being proved right about Spurs. They just they ain't got enough invention in the middle of the park. And um, I know for sure in the end they're going to be Spursy because 
you've got uh, players making mistakes in key areas at vital times. And I've been saying for three, four seasons now, too many of them are getting old all at the same time, as in the centre-backs. Um, so he brings in the thing, if, even if he plays four, flat back four, or he plays uh, five at the back. Um, Uria, Uria, he confirmed at the weekend what he's capable of. You know what I mean? That's a, that's a mistake a 12-year-old would make in a, in, a, in a trial game. You know what I mean? Russia blood, too impetuous, trying to impress. The geezer's going nowhere. He's got his back to goal. What you do, you just get your arm up gently, touch tight. You don't go smashing through him like he did. Like he's gone like that, gone smashing through him. What's he trying to achieve there? He's trying to go, he's trying to run through somebody, physically run through him to get to the ball. What the geezer's going nowhere. That's when you just go bump. Your mind is sharp, but it comes down a gear. When you're a good defend, like when you're a good disciplined defender, which unfortunately I was only 50% of the time at Chelsea, but 99% of the time in the lower divisions, your brain comes down a gear to composure. And you just get your hand up and you go touch tight and you just shepherd him away from goal. And if you make him set the ball back and if you make him set the ball sideways, you've done a great job for the team and you've done a great job for the players behind you and your co-defenders. There's no need to go smashing through him now. Ridiculous. A tw I said under 12 mistake. Under 12 mistake. So, um, they'll be there or there about Spurs. I've, I've, unless, I'm, unless I'm doubling up and I've named somebody else. Uh, I think it's out of them and Everton for fifth. And then, uh, um, no, uh, them and Leicester for fifth and fourth. And then the top three, uh, Chelsea, Man City, Liverpool. I think the league's out of Chelsea and Liverpool. Although Manchester City are coming to the boil at just the right time. 